We'll call our August 3rd meeting of the Cookville City Council to order. Could we have roll call, please? Councilman Woodford. Present. Councilman Henry. Here. Mayor Shelton. Here. Vice Mayor Epps. Here. Councilman Walmart. Here. All present. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite those that wish to do so stand for the invocation given out by Dr. Rob Owens of Kano's Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States flag. Let us bow and pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We just thank you for this opportunity um, to meet and serve our city. Ask for your hand of guidance, Father God, on the leadership of our city and our county. We ask for unity uh, divinely uh, amongst our leadership, Lord, as they lead us into uh, great things. And we ask for your guidance in this meeting as well. That will go smoothly. Things will get accomplished um, as they need to. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray this evening. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. God indivisible with liberty and justice for all thank you dr rob uh, item three consider approval of agenda as presented are there any changes or corrections mayor we have no changes to the agenda thank you is there a motion so moved second motion and second any discussion all vote five yes votes motion carried thank you under old business 5a consider approval of minutes of council meeting held on july 20th 2017 is our motion so moved I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carried. Thank you. 5B. Consider on second and final reading Ordinance 0170613, amending the Cookville Municipal Code, Title 14, Chapter 7, Section 14-712, pertaining to stormwater management guidelines. Greg Brown. Mayor and Council, this ordinance would add some uh, provisions to or exceptions to our one-inch infiltration for projects disturbing greater than an acre. Uh, we've not received any calls or comments since the last meeting, and I would recommend your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion Thank carries. You. Thank you. On the consent agenda, 6A set a date, 9717 for a public hearing on Ordinance 0170815, rezoning 9.26 acres located on the corner of Old Sparta Road and Highway 111, tax map number 83-117.01 from RS20 single family residential to CI commercial industrial mixed use. And item B, a 6B, consider awarding bids for transformers for the electric department. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? So second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, new business 7A. Consider resolution R170810 regarding the Tennessee Public Records Act. Gail Fowler. Mayor and Council, this resolution is presented for your consideration this evening to amend our policy relative to the Tennessee Open Records Act, and it will meet the requirement established to have a policy properly adopted by you that complies with the recent changes in state law. This resolution will also, as noted in Section 2, repeal the ordinance passed in 1997 that is currently in Title I, Chapter 3 of our Cookville Municipal Code. This resolution and policy are recommended by the Office of the Open Records Council under the State Comptroller, as well as recommended by MTAS. So I've included the text on these slides from the amendment summary for your view, but I'll just touch briefly on some of the amendments. I'm not going to read all that. Uh, request to inspect records may be submitted in person, by phone, fax, mail, or email if we use these means to conduct official business via the internet, and we do. Uh, does not require the requester to personally appear to request a record as long as the request can be detailed for the custodian. And for requests that are made and complied with, and this is new and kind of interesting, I think, uh, for requests that are made and complied with, but that are not completed by the requester, it provides some relief for the governmental entity to not have to comply with further requests for a period of time until payment is made, if payment is required, or those other requirements have been met by the requester. And I think that's the first time any relief has been provided to the governmental entity. Would you agree, Dana? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I'm happy to try and answer any questions you may have. Uh, it's a little voluminous there in your notebook, the guidelines, the new forms that are recommended, uh, but I would respectfully request your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion and second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. 7B, consider adopting the TDOC consultant selection policy for projects funded by TDOT or Federal Highway Administration. Melinda Kiefer. 
evening, Mayor and Council, in keeping with our policy update theme tonight. Um, this policy is set forth by TDOT um, in order to do consultant selection for engineering services, architectural services, et cetera. Um, if we have any project that is funded in part or whole by Federal Highway Administration monies, then we must follow this policy. We approved it um, as written in 2012. It has been revised in April of this year. Some of the changes to the required policy that we must follow are that TDOT must now approve our advertising and our scope of work. There are minor changes. Um, the adoption is required in order for us to receive those funds and it sets out the entire procedure that we go through in consultant engineering um, selection services very different than um, the procedures we use for construction where we use a bid process so i'll be glad to answer any questions and i respectfully ask for your approval thank you is there a motion so move do we have a second second, second. motion second any discussion Mayor, uh, yes melinda just to to clarify we had a discussion about this most of the TDOT money we get, as we said before, is passed through money that we get from the federal government. And basically, as I understand this particular change, it has to do with what TDOT is asking us to do when we bring on con consultants and that we're, we're now required to tell them how their application or their request is going to be weighted and how they'll be, how they'll be prioritized. And that, yes, sir. That, that in essence is a change. Is it that not? is a new change also. We must include in the advertisement, which I'm happy to say we always have at the City of Cookville, what the selection or evaluation criteria will be. And so they've adopted that as a required element in this policy as well. Any other comments? All vote. <laughs> Yes, Thank you. 7C, consider declaring a surplus vehicles and miscellaneous items from various departments. Kathy McLean. Okay. Mayor and Council, I have uh, provided you copies from each department for some surplus items. The Fire Department, General, Police, Public Works, Leisure Services, Water Quality Control, and Gas Department. I'm not going to read every one of these, but I promise you they're items that have either... Um, old not usable anymore or outdated or and um, like to request to surplus those and sell those and get a little money out of them all right, all right thank you is there a motion so move. second motion and second any discussion i like your comments it needs some work on a lot of the things <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> any other comments i'll vote Five yes votes, motion carried. Thank you. Uh, 70, consider authorizing the city manager to enter an agreement with TDOT to reimburse TDOT for the city of Cookville utility adjustments required on the Willow Avenue resurfacing project. Ronnie Kelly. Mayor and Council, uh, TDOT's in the beginning phase of resurfacing Willow Avenue. We had been in discussions with TDOT concerning the adjustments of the water, sewer, and gas facilities, utility facilities out there during that project. We had requested TDOT to include those in the project at the beginning of the project and that didn't get done for whatever reason. Uh, TDOT has now agreed to issue a change order on the project at the contracted unit bid prices if the water department and the gas department will reimburse TDOT the cost of those adjustments. We think that's the best way to do it. It'll be a lot better job. You got one contractor out there and, and so that's the way to do it. Uh, traffic control is also required in there. They have separate uh, bid prices for that. The, the estimated costs are shown on your uh, memo and on, on the board. Our estimated cost is $75,374.14. That's an estimated based on the number of manholes, valves that we know is out there. They may find some during the project that's covered up that we're not sure, but we don't think so. Uh, so I'm requesting that council authorize the city manager to notify TDOT that the city of Cookville agrees to reimburse TDOT the cost of Cookville's utility adjustments on this project. Thank you, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Run, run it's my understanding that uh, that resurfacing project will likely will start this month. Is that, is that probably true? Yes. Okay. I think, I'm not sure when they're going to start grinding, Greg, but I think it was sometime August 21st. August 21st. Thank you. Any other? And just to be clear, this this is simply about the manholes. And those kind of things, it does not address any drainage issue of which there is multiple. It does, but this project or the whole project doesn't address any of those. 
no. for Willow Avenue, no. unfortunately. So, okay. <coughs> Just let the record show that. Uh, I'll vote. Obvious vote. Motion carries. Uh, thank you. 7E, consider rejecting all bids received on the 2017 smoke testing project. Uh, Ronnie Kelly. Uh, Mayor and Council, we have uh, open bids on a 2017 smoke testing project that we do every couple of years. Uh, we only received one bidder, and it was way out of our budgeted amount, so we would request that the council reject all bids and let us rebid it. Very good. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All vote. Thank you. Five yes votes. Thank motion you. carries. 7F, consider approval to pay invoices from Gallatin Electric and Murfreesboro Electric for their assistance during the windstorm restoration effort. Tony Peak. Mayor and Council, we have received invoices from the City of Gallatin Department of Electricity and also the City of Murfreesboro Department of Electricity uh, for their assistance during the Memorial Holiday Storm Restoration. And since those amounts were in excess of $10,000, thought it was appropriate to City Council approve those before we make payment. So I'd recommend your approval. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? I have one question. Well, we're very thankful for this. They were a tremendous effort and helped us. I know we've in the past also gone and helped people. That is correct. Do, do we bill? Have we yes. billed in the past? That's, that's a common occurrence? Yes. We have a mutual aid agreement yes. with most, if not all, okay. the municipalities in the state of Tennessee. And it's a reciprocal type agreement. Uh, if we go they pay our wages. If they come here, we pay whatever their wages are. And this is a, and will be this will be a reimbursable expense in our um, declaration as well. We're hoping so. Yes. Very good. Any other questions? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Seven G. Consider authorizing the city manager to execute a poll attachment agreement with Tennessee Tech University. Tony Peake. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, this attachment agreement uh, replaces uh, an existing agreement approved by the council back in 2012. 12. Tennessee Tech has probably uh, very few attachments to our polls, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20, possibly. Uh, we, wanted, we needed to change the fee schedule portion of that old con older contract uh, due to TVA exercising their role as our regulator, and they're going to start looking at the cost each year to see if that fee needs to be adjusted. Uh, keeping it, all the folks in the valley whole is basically what they're trying to do. Uh, and again, the contract allowed allows TV, TTU to attach fiber to our poles. Uh, the agreement's been reviewed by the city attorney. The initial attachment fee is 1252, but that will change at uh, for next uh, calendar year. And uh, they're the license Tennessee Tech's required to pay for any make ready we have to do to move stuff around to provide for their attachment. And the initial term of the contract's five years, then after the five years, it's automatically renewable each year thereafter. I'd recommend your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All vote. Thank you. Thank you. Five yes, both. 7-H, consider awarding bid for AED units. Chief Blair. Mayor and council members, we received bids for 18 AEDs at the price shown to you, and we request your approval to purchase from AED brands meeting our specifications. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Um, will this replace some of the AEDs that we and got initially back in 1997, uh, we, the hospital board gave uh, $35,000 to the city to initially start getting AEDs, or are those long gone? I believe they are, Mayor, or, uh, Mr. Womack, they uh, replacing a bunch of old ones. Okay. Any other questions? All vote. Five yes votes, motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. That concludes our agenda portion of the meeting. We have time at the end. If anyone would like to speak to the council on non-agenda items, you're welcome to do so. Do we have anyone that would like to address the council? No? Council members, do we have any, anything anybody wants to say? <coughs>
Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would uh, just you almost got it. I mean, just, <laughs> just in the nick, I was about to hit it. I just uh, I look. I just I know this is a little bit. Little, it's still a little bit early, but we all know about this, uh, the eclipse in Cookville, Tennessee, being a, a solar eclipse uh, town and city. And I, I I I have been getting a lot of questions and uh, questions about what's going on. Not not just what's going on, but also concerns and some of the things that we've done. I look forward. I, I want to just let you guys know and let our city manager know and administrators know that. I'd like to find out, but to see what as we as a city and as a, as a county are going to be uh, instituting in order to try to take care of some of the traffic issues and uh, other things that are going on. I just so we can kind of keep that, just relay that to our the constituents. So just want to let you know. I'm, I'm sure you guys are too. You find hear a lot about this. So look look forward to hear, hearing more from our administrators. Mayor and council members, if I could, I know our emergency management agencies and departments across the city have met uh, already previously. I know they have another two meetings scheduled in trying to be as prepared as we can be uh, for what whatever amount of visitors that come to Cookville for the eclipse. And no doubt. I knew that was going on, but that's, that's one of those things that I just, I'm getting peppered mm -hmm. every day about this uh, for for whatever reason. Folks at the hospital just are very interested in this. So I just look forward to hearing that. And I know, I know where our Folks are working hard because you guys always do, and look forward to hearing, hearing plans and relaying that to my constituents. Any other comments? We're adjourned.